All right, it's uh, physics 1101, uh, chapter seven, on momentum and collisions. All right, and this will be related to the lab on momentum and collisions. And this will also be part of the lab on what we call the ballistic pendulum, which I will go through today also, and go from there, all right? So uh, this is uh, what we have here. All right, so momentum, remember from uh, chapter Early chapters, we have velocity, which is a vector in units of meters per second. Then we have mass in kilograms. And we have forces, mass times acceleration. And this is in units of newtons. All right, that's when you're accelerating an object, it has a force on it, and the units are newtons. All right. Now we're going to introduce a concept called momentum. And we're giving it the little letter P, all right? Uh, not sure why they picked that, but that's what, we, what has been accepted. And momentum is actually based at a constant velocity. So we define momentum as mass times velocity. Notice how this is different from force, which is mass times acceleration. So I'll get rid of that for now. And this is in units of kilograms, meters per second. So that's the unit. Mass times velocity are units of momentum. It's a vector, so the direction makes a difference, and it's based on the velocity times the mass. So that's what we call momentum. All right. Now, different type of objects, the faster it goes, the more momentum they have. Remember, when we go back to the previous chap uh, earlier chapter on energy, kinetic energy is one half mv squared, right? That's in units of joules. We'll be dealing with this in this chapter. So when an object is moving with a certain mass and velocity, it has a kinetic energy of that. So an example would be, let's say we have a 10 kilogram object moving at a velocity of 20 meters per second, uh, 66 miles per hour. Um, the kinetic energy would be one half times 10 times 20 squared, which would be, five times 400 or 2,000 joules, okay? The momentum of that object, because again, both of these moving at constant velocity, so constant V, all right? The momentum P would be 10 times 20, which would be 200 kilograms, meters per second. So that's the units. There's no Newton or Joule unit uh, for momentum. It's just mass times velocity units. All right, so now, as we said, it makes a difference. If we're going 20 meters plus 20 meters per second, it would be that direction. If we're going minus 20 meters per second, it'd be in the opposite direction. Much like up and down, if it's up, it'd be plus, if it's down, it'd be negative. So the direction makes a difference, right? This is the second for part of the first section. Now, all right. Now part of this lab, this thing, and this is what we have to do, collisions, is um, what will, um, introduce now is what we call conservation of momentum. And I'll get to that. So we're still on momentum. With collisions, we have to introduce this concept of conservation of momentum. 
All right, so I'll leave these examples up. This particular one, kinetic energy, um, momentum. Again, P is the letter for momentum. All right, <clears throat> so let's get rid of this. Leave that up for the moment and introduce the concept of collisions. And collision can be like, you know, a billiard ball, let's say one weighs one kilogram, another weighs one kilogram. This one's moving at say five meters per second. This one's moving at zero, all right? Now, when a billiard ball, pool ball, billiards, I mean, it's what they collide. If one stop, if you ever notice what will happen afterwards is the first one, A, will stop, B is zero, and B goes off at the speed the other one had. All right? So it, it collides, B goes off, or you've seen a thing called Newton's Cradle, uh, where you have balls and they go back and forth and one, that type of thing. This is what we call an elastic collision. All right? And what we have here is a concept of conservation of momentum. I'm just going to use MOM for bomb. Conservation of momentum. And what, the way this works is momentum before, P before, equals P afterwards. So in any kind of collision, there's always a conservation of momentum. Um, this is the principle of Newton's third law of action-reaction. A collision is kind of like, you know, two things collide, the result of it. A, a rocket ship is kind of like an uncollision. You're sending, you're sending stuff out one end, and the rocket was out. This is exactly the same concept. You send it out as fast as you can one way, by conservation momentum, the rocket goes the other way. So that's sort of the opposite, you know, Newton's third law is a concept of that. So how would we do this? And we're only going to be dealing with, for this chapter, we're only going to be dealing with two objects and one dimension, right? Meaning they're going in the same, they go in the same direction. We're not doing two-dimensional collisions like a glancing blow or something like that. We're only gonna deal with that. I mean, you can get into that, but that's a more complicated and it's not worth doing here. So what we'd have here is M A B A B A plus M B B B. This is all before equals M A B A after plus M B V B after. Okay? So these are the velocities before and these are the velocities afterwards. And they're going to be equal. So what it'll be is running out of space here. This will be five, one times five plus one times zero, which is five kilogram meters per second I'll just get rid of the you know we got the units so this will be five and this will be zero one times zero because the first one stopped plus one times one times five equals five five equals five right So that, that's what we have here, conservation of momentum, right? So this is the equation. So leave that 
there. All right. And actually, I'll rewrite it up here. After. Okay. So, so in an elastic collision, In any any collision, momentum is also always conserved. Now, this is always true no matter what happens. In an elastic collision, we also have conservation of energy, which means one half m a v a squared plus one half m b v b squared equals one half m a v final squared plus one half m a m b v b final squared all right so in the first case this will be the kinetic energy k e um, will be one half times one times five squared plus zero since it's not moving and then the other one, that, and that will be plus one half, one times five squared, which would be 12.5 joules equals 12.5 joules. So in an elastic collision, we have the energy before equals the energy afterwards. Ke before equals kinetic energy afterwards. This is only an elastic collision. No energy is lost. All right, again, this is always the case for momentum of collisions. All right, now, the problem is, or I wouldn't say the problem is, the question is what happens if we have an inelastic collision. So this is like a ball, bounce ball, you know, it could go like back and forth, all right? Or if you had a bouncing ball, super ball, bounce off the floor, comes back the same height, goes back and forth. That's the, con that's the concept there. All right. What? Okay, so this is for uh, conservation of energy when we have an elastic collision. So now let's look at something where we do not have um, energy or at concept, okay, leave that up. Okay, so let's take, you've seen it, all right? If we have, say, a train moving at both of them weigh 10,000 kilograms. All right. And one is moving at 10 liters per second and the other is moving at zero. And then after the collision, they stick together. And so they move off together. All right. So they're stuck together, so they have a final speed together. All right, this is what we would call a totally inelastic, All right? Totally inelastic collision where they hit and they stick together. It's much like if you, you know, drop something and instead of bouncing back up, it just falls and stops. That's what we call a totally inelastic because all the it's they stick together afterwards. So what are we going to see here? All right. Well, we'll do the momentum before, then we can also look at the energy. Again, in an elastic collision, 
energy is conserved, but for here we're going to see something different. So momentum, so we got MA, so we 10,000 times 10 plus zero, since it's not moving. Then afterwards, they're both moving together, and this will be MA plus MB V final. So in this case, if, they're, if it's totally inelastic, the first part's still the same, the second part is this expression. So they both have the same velocity because they're stuck together. All right, so that would be 100,000 equals um, 10 plus 10, 20,000 times V final, divide both sides by 20,000, and we get five meters per second is V final. Okay, so that's the that's what we have. You know, we have conservation momentum, 100,000 equals 100,000, right? So they both have the same. Momentum is the same afterwards, 100,000 equals 100,000, right? All right, let's look at the kinetic energy then afterwards. Okay. <clears throat> so again, it'll be one half <clears throat> M. Now we got one half M V squared is kinetic energy. And for the first object, that'll be one half times 10,000 times 10 squared plus zero equals one half times both of them together, MA, so 20,000 times V final squared, which is five squared. Okay. Again, due to the problem, we started off, the first one was going 10 meters per second, Second one zero, afterwards they collide, they're both that. So what do we have end up with here? Uh, this would be 5,000 times 100, which would be 500,000 joules. And then for this one, this is going to be um, 10,000 times 25. So that'll be 200, 250,000 joules. All right, notice this is half of that. So 50% of the energy lost. Okay, that's what we have there. 50% energy is lost. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. All right. So that's the case there. So I'm going to do a couple more and then. I'll stop there and I'll save um, impulse and center mass for the next lecture as part of chapter eight, really. So that I'll save that for later in the week. So let me just do this. So we start this, we end up with 50% energy lost. All right, let's do one more. And then I'll talk briefly about the ballistic pendulum um, because that's a step-by-step -step real situation. And so let's take one, let's have one where we have uh, a very large object, say 100 kilograms, hitting a small object, one kilogram. And the other case is we have a small, kilo, small one kilogram hitting 100 kilograms. All right, what's the situation here? Um, so let's take this going 10 meters per second. 
This is zero. In the second case, this is 10 meters per second, and this is zero. The all right, let's take them all separate and look at the momentum. So we go into the first case. This will be, um, again, mass times velocity. The first one is 100 times 10 plus zero equals, and again, they collide and go off together. Afterwards, they collide and go off together, all right? So again, this is totally inelastic. They collide and stick together afterwards. So this will be then uh, 100 plus one, it'll be 101 times V final, okay? Second one, first one, this will be one times 10, one kilogram plus zero equals 101 times V final. Now this will be problem one, this is problem two. Now the velocity are not the same, because in the first case we had a heavy object hitting a light object. In the second case we got a light object hitting a heavy object. So what's the final velocity here? Um, this will be 1,000 over 101. The final, which is roughly 9.9 .9 meters per second. To get this more exact. Nine point nine. All right. In the second case, this is ten divided by ten, a hundred and one, I should say. All right. This will be following. Point one meters per second. I mean, the speed is like a hundred times different. This one hardly slows down at all. It's kind of like if a, a truck hits a fly, you're not going to notice any difference. This one is basically like the fly hitting the truck, right? Uh, so that's the momentum before. They're both the same. Now, what's the kinetic energy? All right, if you look at, again, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So the kinetic energy before would be one half times 100 times 10 squared, which would be 100 times 100 is 10,000, 5,000 joules, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 100 times 100, 10,000, yep, 5,000 joules. This is before, and then after, it'll be 1 half times 101 times 9.9 .9 squared. This I need a calculator for. Okay, 4,950 joules. So about 1% lost. Okay, before I hardly any, 50 joules lost, so 1%. The second case, we have uh, kinetic energy before. Okay, one half will be one half times one times 10 squared which would be 100 times one half, 
so 50 joules. So there isn't much to start with, all right? And then afterwards, kinetic energy is one half times 101 times 0.1 squared. And I will do this. Okay, this will be 0.5 joules. In this case, 99% is lost. It's almost nothing left. The thing is barely moving afterwards. So 99% lost. This is what happens when you have a difference of a large object, a light object, or a small object, a big object. Basically, it's like something running into a wall. Basically, everything stops and all the energy is lost. All right, so that's, that's the case. We have totally elastic collisions where they bounce off perfectly or totally inelastic collisions where they stick. There's places, things in between, but for the purpose of this class, we're going to just stick with this, okay? So that's that. I'll do one more part here. I'll, let me look at the ballistic pendulum quickly and you can go uh, look at that and that's related to this too so all right and I, I go through that anyway so so for the ballistic pendulum since it's part of the chapter, but it's also part of the lab, all right? We have a bullet, M, A, and let's just call it, this is little m, and it strikes into a block of wood, which is hanging, right? Which is much bigger. All right, so this has some kinetic energy to it, one half mv squared. It hits the block, all right, embeds in the block, and then the two block, and then the block, because it then gives it conservation momentum, all right, will then rise a certain height, H, all right? And what we have here is conservation momentum. So we have um, M, and this has some velocity, MV, is equal to little m plus big M times V final. And that goes into kinetic, so that then becomes kinetic energy of one half M plus M V squared goes into equals the kinetic potential energy PE of M plus m times g times height, how high up it goes. And then based on how high it goes, we can figure out the kinetic energy and hit final, final kinetic and final velocity. All right, the velocity that it had when it first, after it hit, from there we can go back and find the initial velocity. So this is how you can actually find out the initial velocity, because you can't really get it from photographs. So this is what we call the ballistic pendulum, and it can tell you the speed of a bullet. So it's measuring the speed of the bullet. Okay. So that is uh, basically on chapter seven, with the exception of impulse and center mass, which I'll talk about in uh, part of chapter eight. Okay, so have a good day and focus.